Okay. So um, we're speaking today with Hema Law, who's a organizer with Movimiento Cosecha in Grand Rapids, as well as Movimiento Cosecha of Michigan. And um, so thanks for talking with us today, Hema. Thank you, Jeff, for inviting me. Yes. So um, Cosecha Circle uh, started in Grand Rapids uh, in 2017. And as best as I understand it, one of the demands that has been a part of Cosecha since since that time uh, has been for undocumented immigrants to be able to obtain a driver's license in Michigan. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you think that uh, that this this is likely to happen in 2023 because of the the new proposed legislation that's now in the Michigan legislature? Yeah, uh, thank you, Jeff. Yes, it's been um, it's, it's been the, since 2017, as you said, that Cosecha uh, Grand Rapids, a chapter in Grand Rapids, um, has been listening to what the people or we part, you know, of the affected community. The one of the things that is it will be huge for our own benefit and in, in uh, driving without fear is that driving licenses for all like like back in 2008, 15 years ago. Um, so it's been too long without a license, licenses. Um, with the political climate that we have in Michigan after uh, the elections last year, uh, we have um, a majority in the, in the House and the Senate of Democrats that have said publicly that they support licenses for all. Um, and there, so so there is a hope, and there is a uh, overdue that we have licenses for undocumented in Michigan. What we think is um, it is likely to happen, but uh, we need to put pressure because uh, we're not going to just rely on their word because uh, they have you know more instance instances that they promise. Um, uh, some kind of change that doesn't happen. So we uh, we will continue uh, doing uh, the campaign and doing actions and doing uh, pre public pressure uh, for licenses to happen. Okay, okay. Um, there was a MLive article that sort of related to the, the, the recent announcement about the new uh, proposed legislation about driver's licenses for undocumented people. And the, it was in M Live, and the headline read: "Ensuring immigrants can acquire Michigan driver's licenses, let them live in peace." Advocates say. What I found interesting about the article is that those who are directly impacted from the current policy to deny immigrants, uh, undocumented immigrants, uh, a driver's license, are never cited in the article. Mm -hmm. So how is that possible? I mean, how, how is that? Uh, I mean, why, and why or or why do you think that's the case? Why do you think that people who are most affected by the policy, right. most impacted, right. are not the primary sources for talking about mm -hmm. it? Because as 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 you know, not just Cosecha, but as Cosecha is a prime example, uh, has made this an issue, and and Cosecha is made up primarily of people who are undocumented immigrants. So, what are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah. They yeah, uh, thank you for mentioning that. I, I not personally myself read the article, but uh, what what you mentioned is that uh, there are not just cosecha; they are advocating for driver's license for all. For all, we went very vocal, right? And then we do uh, send press releases in uh, to everyone in our list of media lists, so they can look at our our point of view as as a uh, people affected and and you know decided what what to write right i think there's more groups that have been advocating um they are from what we call allies or people not affected and i, I guess the media it chooses what message to put on right but especially in m i mean the 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 source that you mentioned and live, I'm pretty sure our communications department sent a uh, press release about the introduction of the of the bill, and 
and others, right? So it, for, for in one piece, what I think is, it's good that it's being mentioned um, uh, from other sources other than cosecha, because then you say it's not just cosecha, um, but it's too bad that they don't take uh, in consideration the message of the affected community in this case. Yeah, okay. Um, so my understanding is, is that it's been 15 years in Michigan since undocumented immigrants could could obtain a driver's license. Um, can you talk a, a bit about how Cosecha is dramatizing the whole mm. sort of 15th anniversary kind of thing, 15 years, uh, along with um, why, as long as, along with, if you could talk a bit about why it's so crucial or so urgent um, for, uh, for uh, undocumented immigrants to be able to obtain a driver's license. Like, I mean, why is that such a priority right now? Yes. Um, Yes, thank you, Jeff, for mentioning the 15 years or quinceañeras. Uh, so one of the things that Cosecha uh, tactics uses the, the, the popular, uh, the people power, the, pop, the popular belief. So our undocumented immigrants uh, culture is about quinceañeras and it has brought this culture to this country and uh, mo most uh, people here on, uh, knows about quinceañeras, so, or probably been to a quinceañera, been to a, to a celebration of a young lady's uh, 15th birthday. And, and uh, why is uh, so we dramatize in that it's not it's not a celebration in this case it's a commemoration of uh, can you imagine uh, girls and boys uh, they're now 15 or older get their kids. The, that their parents haven't had the chance to have a driver's license. And they know since early age, since they can uh, understand that it is not good, that the, they don't have a driver's license, but they still have to, uh, you know, do the thing. We, we still have to do the things that we do every day, like any other person in this, in Michigan. Um, then that we need to mobilize, right? That we need to move from point B to point B uh, with fear, with fear that their their parents are um, not going to be able to come back because they don't have a license and they've been taken from them. So oh, since they since they know since they're little all the way to their 15th birthday in, in uh, for these 15 years, it's a trauma. There are kids have grown, go, grow. Um, the the others, you know, uh, the the other kids um, don't, and it, it is not fair. The the family lives in fear for so many years. That's why it's so important that this time don't take any more um, promises or any more excuses, if you will, for politicians to pass the bill. Okay. Okay. And, and and maybe for people who who are not affected by this, right? Who don't have like a the lived experience of 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 driving without a license, um, you know why why is it why is this so urgent? I mean, why why is this a priority for Cosecha to get this uh, uh, to win driver's licenses in Michigan? Yeah, what is where is it? Um, so Michigan was one of the last. Um, states that uh, stop giving driver's licenses for all. Um, and in other states has been longer and in other states, like we have experience in Mich in Massachusetts and New Jersey as Cosecha in a fight. It took took them longer, like years longer with a democratic majority with a, with the a, uh, politicians that they say uh, are in our in our site or in our side or promise that they will pass um, the driver's license for all bills. So it is important that we hold them accountable to their word. And for people affected, it, you know, it should it should have been done long time ago for for the same thing that I mentioned: the trauma, the separation, the fear, but still our. Um, 
undocumented immigrants are here in in uh, United States and in Michigan, uh, contributing with the labor and with um, paying uh, taxes and every other aspect of the lives in in Michigan. Um, so it's time to get what we deserve. Okay. Um, one thing that is, is uh, that is painfully evident to um, those of you who are you know directly involved in this kind of organizing work, and it's even been clear, very clear to somebody like myself who who tries to to be a supporter and a, a, a and accompany the work of of Cosecha uh, to to for, around immigrant justice issues is that since the 2020 presidential election, there has been sort of a, a decline of interest from allies to be involved in this work right um so i'm just wondering if you have thoughts about why you think that's that's the case uh, that there has been sort of less mm -hmm. less turnout for lots of uh actions you know most maybe most glaringly for the media the annual media action but but just in general okay. yeah um is um actually we we didn't have an analysis uh once we knew that biden was going was going to be the president that it was going to be harder to organize um with the immigrant community and with our um comrades our allies um the uh the you know that's there's still these promises uh, from from the party that says that um, support immigrants and, and stuff like that, um, like the Democratic par Party saying, oh, vote for me. We're doing immigration reform or we're doing li driver's licenses for all. Uh, and those promises resonate with the people and the people are mm, hopeful that th those have come come true but we know as oh, in other times in the immigrant movement that those promises don't 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 mean anything and then we actually we have to uh work harder uh in this in this uh in organizing because uh people people think think that there's a sense of false security that uh, oh yeah the the people there is friendly to us is in power so we're going to get what we deserve and it's not the case the case is that you know still promises still uh, you know people has been uh, being separated and deported uh, the same rate or more than the previous administration that said uh, they 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 want to deport everyone right so. Um, it, what I think is this uh, control, if you will, of, the, of people uh, organizing um, because of false promises. Uh, so it is uh, happening with our allies and it, it is also happening with the un undocumented or the people that we organize and they are directly affected. Um, uh, and, and of course, we are the force because it's it's uh it's uh, uh affecting us directly. So the organizers on on the um, affected community has not let down, but it's it is uh for for well meaning meaning allies that I I know they they're working still, but they you know choose where to where to go to put their efforts. As, as an accompanying uh they affected and i be, i believe that they you know they don't uh do it intentionally that they, they maybe they're working on something else but um you know it ha we still without license we still without papers so there's a lot of work to do yeah yeah uh and maybe just by way of wrapping up um uh winning driver's licenses is not the end goal, right? So can you talk just a little bit more about what sort of the long-term goals of the of of both Cosecha and, and the larger immigrant justice movement is? Correct. Yes. Uh, so driver's licenses is just a 
a step, just like when we did locally here in Grand Rapids, we're ending the contract uh, with ICE. And so this is more step towards, towards more liberation to more uh, people's um, undocumented immigrants and workers to, to have uh, dignity, respect, and a piece of paper that says that, um, you know, that you can just travel to your country, come back, and continue doing what we do uh, because we have already, you know, called, called this our home in, in the United States. So um, the, the, lar the larger vision uh, for Cosecha uh, is to um, have permanent protection for all undocumented immigrants. Um, and when I say all is not this uh, notion of who's the best immigrant for the United States, <laughs> um, like um, the, the folks that, that had TPS or the folks that have DACA or the, the uh, agricultural workers, but everyone um, does the larger goal and um, probably it's, it's a huge, it's a huge undertaking so that we, step by step, we, we get in people to organize and believe that through the, uh, through the people power is when we change, uh, do a big social change. So 11 million or more, I don't know how many we are here uh, to be able to change the life, lives and have a piece of paper that can um, stop the fear of being separated for the families. It's a huge, huge undertaking and that's where we want to do. Okay. And we're going to, we're going to post this interview before the May Day action. So can you share a, a few words uh, of encouragement to people about why it would be important for, for folks to show up on May 1st at Garfield Park? Yes, Garfield Park, May 1st, Monday at 4 p.m. Uh, we want everyone to show up with their families and their pets if they want to, uh, because it's, it's a uh, commemoration of the uh, workers' struggle and in the United States and around the world and May Day. And um, in this case, Cosecha has done uh, every every year a march uh, for uh, Im uh, immigrant workers' rights. And in this case, the theme is 15 years without licenses, now one more. Um, so we come and um, bring um, dressed like if you will go to the quinceanera. And if you uh, are a quinceanera or have a, a dress of quinceanera, please bring you with you uh, in some comfortable shoes to walk. We're going to walk uh, for about two and a half miles and um, yeah, and be a commemoration of our uh, immigrant workers struggle. In this case, driving licenses for all. Great. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for talking with us today, Hema, and, I, and also thank you just for just your ongoing commitment for not only your community, but for the larger struggles for justice and liberation um, for all people. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jeff, for also being a uh, our comrade. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm.